In the alternate version of Quick Study 3-25, we're asked to calculate the current ratio for Chavez Company based on the information of assets and liabilities presented in the table above. Now, a good starting point is identifying the formula for the current ratio, and that's going to be current assets and current liabilities. The current ratio gives us a sense of liquidity. How able are we to pay our short-term obligations? Keep in mind, it's great if a company is profitable, but it also has has to have cash available when bills come due or it can be forced into bankruptcy. So this is a good ratio to calculate. Now it would have been nice if they would have directly given us current assets or current liabilities, but they didn't. And keep in mind in quiz questions, um, homework questions, or even your exam questions, you might have to work towards calculating that yourself. So we're going to use the concepts that we learned from the classified balance sheet in order to separate things into current or short term versus long term in order to calculate current assets and current liabilities. So let's go ahead and dig in. Accounts receivable is going to be a current asset. These are amounts that we expect to collect from customers. Well, that's going to happen in the short term. It's going to be 19,500. Accounts payable is a liability. When you see the word payable, you usually think liability, so that's not a current asset. Cash is another current asset, 9,900. You may have initially said equipment. While equipment is an asset, it's long term. You know, we should have equipment around five years, 10 years, whatever it might be in our business. It's not something we're going to use up um, within a one year time frame. So mark that off our list. Long term notes payable is a liability. Office supplies, usually we expect to use those up within a one year time frame. So that's going to, and that's an asset. It's $3,100. Prepaid rent, prepaid. Typically signifies an asset, usually prepaid rent or prepaid insurance are current assets. Unearned fees, that's going to be a liability. So the four items that we're going to include as current assets in this situation are $19,500 for accounts receivable, $9,900 for cash, $3,100 for office supplies, $4,040 for prepaid rent for a total current assets of $36,540. Now, let's next start to dig into our four remaining items and figure out which of these four are current liabilities. Accounts payable is going to be a current liability. Our vendors and suppliers expect us typically to pay them in a less than a one-year time frame, 11400 Remember, equipment was an asset, in particular, it was a long-term asset. While long-term notes payable is a liability, the long-term signifies we're not paying it within a one-year time frame, so we'll ignore that. Unearned fees. When you see the word unearned, typically think liability. Usually unearned revenues are less than a one year time frame, so they're typically considered to be current liabilities. So our current liabilities are going to be accounts payable of $11,400 plus unearned fees of $4,100 for a total of $15,500. Current assets of 36540 divided by or compared to current liabilities of 15500 gives us a ratio of 2.36. So in essence, somewhat this is saying is for every dollar of current liabilities, we have $2.36 of current assets. So this just on the surface would tend to say that it appears that Chavez Company is in a pretty good position in regards to liquidity. You know, we're, we're not concerned at just looking on the surface here that they would have challenges. You know, we feel like they would have a, a fairly easy time of, in general, paying off their short-term debts as they came due based on the fact that they have $2.36 of current assets for every dollar of current liabilities. As you get concerned, definitely if this number is lower than one, we would have concerns about that. If their short-term debt actually exceeded their current assets, we would definitely have concerns about that. So number one, under one would definitely be concerning. Also, if we started to see a trend downward over time, if we started to see this decline over and over again, we would start to be concerned that we're definitely moving in the wrong direction.